Today we go to Hormuz Island. <laughs> from Hormuz and he was just telling us that uh, there's a population of 7,000 people and essentially this island was born from volcanic activity and we're going to see some pretty interesting geography I think on this island guys so welcome to Hormuz So guys, it looks uh, well and truly like we are on another planet. This looks like Mars. Uh, this is Hormuz. Uh, you can see a lot of salt kind of being, um, Ahmed said being kind of generated, out, like being pumped out of the ground slowly. And uh, some crazy ass geography, all different types different colors of minerals and stuff uh, it really looks like we're on Mars I mean if you're gonna make a movie <coughs> it's a crazy island that's for sure go for all baby Come on. so we're gonna just walk in amongst this stuff and go from there So guys, we're approaching a section where uh, Ahmed was saying that there's essentially salt being generated and uh, being pushed out of the earth, which is pretty interesting. Unlimited salt supply. And the salt crystallizes and you get some beautiful rock formations. So let's have a look, shall we? Guys, you can see, uh, this is like solid salt crystals just like jutting out of the earth. It's pretty insane. It kind of looks like rock, but this is solid crystal. This whole thing is just one chunky crystal of salt. It's insane. Salt crystals of Hormuz Island, guys. You're never going to run out of salt. <laughs> Oh. 
بعد الاستشار سنة دروس نمت ولي هنا كولان اكس مدش كافي شوب و هوتل بسمت ايك سربازي استخرة بعد هنا كولان حالة السيوت الستاش مثلا هي السيوت الكاملة برأي اجار كولان همه چيز كامل هست بليد همه چيز كامل دار هوتل هر همه هوتل مالاوه انساري تهران ايران مال تهران بعد جمعه گفتی فرش اینجا درست میکرده؟ آره پایینش فرش خاکی درست کرده دو سه سال درست میکرده خاکی شب Guys, this is a hotel at the moment. Pretty, looks like freaking Smurf Village. Pretty funky uh, hotel. Um, it used to be a place where they used to uh, make uh, rugs. We all know about Persian rugs. Uh, but down in that direction, um, there used to be, I don't know, huts or something. They used to build uh, Persian rugs, but now there's a funky hotel in place. It's got a swimming pool and everything. <laughs> Pretty cool. Is this hotel? Hotel Majra. It's called Hotel Majra. Oh, it's, a, it's an award-winning hotel as well. Some funky hotel guys. The Smurf Village of Hotel Hormuz. I'm oh, sorry, Island Hormuz. Very nice. Award winning hotel, guys. Guys, we're uh, at a location. Uh, Ahmed brought us here. It's, uh, it's a place that kind of shows off all the different colors in the earth of Hormuz. Apparently, there's 79 different colors. Let's go check it out, eh? Yeah, it kind of, it really feels like I'm on a different planet. I keep saying it, but I mean, you got silver at the top, you got red, you got yellow or cream, you've got dark red, you've almost got purple. I mean, you've got a white mountain behind us. A very interesting landscape. All uh, from volcanic activity, apparently. There's like crystal. This is like solid crystal. It's pretty nuts. It's pretty nuts. It's just like a sheet of crystal. This whole thing, even down here. You've got yellow. All sorts of minerals. Giant sheets of crystals. Interesting place to live. It's a very interesting, unique backdrop. When you think of islands in the Persian Gulf, you think of sand, you think of palm trees. You don't think of this. This is literally the backdrop. It's, this is not really like a, from what I'm seeing, it's not like a small part of the island. Oh my God. I don't know if you guys can see that, that's like... That's sparkling! I don't know if this video is capturing it, it's literally sparkling. Dolly! 
And another thing they say, the crystals, I actually just felt it then, the crystals absorb your sound waves. There's no echo. Gotti! Oh my God. That is so weird. It is muffled. So instead of bushwalking, you go stonewalking here in Hornwoods, and it's just as interesting. I never thought rocks could be so interesting. This is like a geologist wet dream here. This is like geology porn. It's like an orgy. Too much happening. Let's head back to the car, guys. Really, really interesting geography here in Hormuz. Guys, we just went around the corner and it's just all this white mountains. Uh, it's made out of chalk apparently, but it's absolutely stunning. The contrast of colors in this place is quite amazing. So. It's just white. You can see the contrast with the red there. And the other side of the road is like a totally different colour. Pretty cool. I kind of wish we got one of these things. These tuk-tuks. These are serious tuk-tuks, man. They're 250s. Made here in Iran. Pretty big engine for a tuk-tuk. Everywhere you go in Hormuz, they're selling clothes, but I must reinforce, they're not overbearing. They don't, they just say hello to you and uh, they don't, they're not a pain in the ass at all. Um, they've got shops, they've got clothing shops, the local people here at all the tourist stops. But yeah, they're not, not, um, I really hate going places where people harass you, uh, which is one thing I love about Iran. No one harasses you at all. They might just say hello, be healthy, yada yada yada, have a look at my wares, like a normal bazaar. They don't like stick onto you and like follow you for like three kilometers and harass the crap out of you so much that you want to, uh, <laughs> that you want to uh, <clears throat> get the hell out of the country. <laughs> Hey guys, Ooh, I nearly fell. <laughs> uh, we're at a place called Red Beach because of this red dirt that I don't know if you can see it, but it's extremely sparkly as well. Apparently, it's red dirt and it's mixed with silver. Uh, and because of that, it's illegal to take any of this dirt off of this island. Uh, you can see the usual clothes. Everywhere you go, there's clothes being sold here, which is pretty cool. And uh, down below is the beach. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but the beach is literally silver and glittering. It's quite amazing. Uh, you can see that the water is a little bit red uh, from the soil. And yeah, it kind of feels like Ayers Rock, I suppose, a little bit. See, it's extremely red but uh this red dirt they use for a whole bunch of things including extracting the color of it for a sauce that's right goes on food ceramics textiles uh, and he said a few other things that i forgot so it's actually a very 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 useful harvestable resource this red dirt and it's used for a range of things but man, that silver down on the beach is amazing. 
I don't know if you guys can see it, but I might walk down and get a better shot. Let's do that, shall we? Guys, this is a... <laughs> I've never experienced anything like this. It's actually a little bit disorientating because as I'm looking down at the sand, it's just like glittering like starlight and it just hits your eyes and kind of... You get a bit of vertigo, actually. Especially when you move. As you move, it twinkles like thousands of stars. And uh, I've never seen anything like it. Silver Beach, mate. Silver freaking beach. I don't know if you can pick up the twinkle. I hope I hope the camera's picking up the twinkling. Because the twinkling is really what makes this place magical. It's called Red Beach, but I'd rather call it Silver Beach. So guys, we are just driving back from Red Beach with Ahmed, our tour guide, and uh, something that I've noticed in Bandar Abbas and Qaysh and here in Hormuz is this thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a roll of tint which is suction cupped to the windscreen, obviously used to keep the heat out. It gets so hot in this area because we are on the equator and uh, they they tint the windshield pretty much because if not the uh, the dashboard will fully melt so it's a little add-on that they have uh, across their windshield and it kind of extends and, and, and rolls back into place when they don't need it the heat of Hormuz Guys, check out that view. Check out that view. Apparently in those caves is a turtle spawning location. <clears throat> so when turtles level up and die, they respawn here. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'm a gamer. Pretty cool. There's a fisherman. Very nice place. Beautiful island. Can't see any turtles yet. The ledge is a bit precarious. But beautiful nonetheless. Very nice. Turtle Cove. Guys, behind me is the Portuguese fort that was built by the Portuguese that came to Hormuz and ended up controlling this island for a hundred years. Unfortunately, I can't go in at the moment, which is shit. But uh, Mr. Albuquerque came here in the 1500s and uh, with the intention of disrupting Muslim trade because this island again Strait of Hormuz strategic placed right in the uh, tightest part of the Persian Gulf where all the ships have to pass through and um, he, he, he built the fort he, he had kind of two phases he came here and uh, he only had 500 men he still overtook the place uh, the place capitul capitulated to him and um, and uh, I think his guys, his men, ended up getting a little bit sick and stuff. They had a bit of a disease. This guy's blaring his music. And um, so Mr. Albuquerque had to retreat and then he had to come back later. He was determined. He was, Mr. Albuquerque was determined to keep Hormuz under Portuguese control. 
and essentially once they set up this fort it acted like a massive customs uh, point of control and they just collected massive amounts of silver and coins from the trade ships that would pass through the Strait of Hormuz. Um, it's a pretty amazing place. Now he, he conquered this place with 500 guys initially and the same soldiers that did all the fighting ended up building these walls around us and apparently the people of Hormuz were gobsmacked that soldiers would do such menial tasks. Um, again, I would love to have gone inside here and, and, and checked it out. Um, apparently there's a church inside, there's a prison, there's water storage system. And apparently, I don't know if this is true, but our tour guide told me there's a cave under here which goes all the way underwater to the island of Fesh. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there is. Uh, no one would have swam it, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the Portuguese fort, built by Portuguese hand and hard work, a remnant of the Portuguese empire that took control of Hormuz Island for about a hundred years. And the Iranians on the mainland, uh, we're obviously pissed off <laughs> that this southern island was under Portuguese control, but they needed the assistance of the English and their naval uh, ships uh, to finally take over Hormuz Island. So the British were pounding this place with, uh, with their naval fleet, and the Iranians sent the ground forces onto the island to finally, um, to finally, um, Everyone's just blasting music on the tuk-tuks and just dancing. It's fucking awesome. And uh, to finally take over Hormuz Island and reintegrate it into the Iranian uh, nation or empire or wh whatever you want to call it. There it is. It's big. And I love how there's people that just live right across the road from it. It's pretty cool. They did a magnificent job. This is like solid wall. A lot of hard labor, man. Some Portuguese dude in the 1500s would have lifted this rock. And put it in its place. You can see uh, we're on the northern I think we're on the northern side of the island. I'm not sure, don't quote me. But obviously it's overlooking, uh, strategically placed to overlook like two harbors or something. It's pretty cool. The Portuguese fort of Hormuz Island. Hey guys, I'm back in my hotel. Hotel Hom Homa in Bandar Abbas. I wanted to kind of summarize my like traveling experience here in, in, in the south of Iran, which is different to the north. Um, obviously, it's the hot, humid uh, part of Iran on, on the Gulf, Persian Gulf. Um, and if you can think of a triangle, with Bandar Abbas being the uh, port city on the mainland, and then you've got two islands which represent the other two points of the triangle. One being the island of Ghesh and the island of Hormuz, which you guys have all seen by now. My recommendation is, um, unless you've got a friend, if you've got a friend anywhere in Iran, it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to have a blast. It could be the smallest village, the biggest city. If you've got a friend, this advice uh, does not matter, right? Uh, Bandar Abbas is, is not all that interesting uh, for like, the typical tourist stuff like um, I don't know historical sites. It's it's quite interesting for its food if you like seafood. A lot of Iranian seafood stuff is here, um, but there's not that many like sites to go and see. Um, Bandar Abbas to me would definitely I'd recommend having a contact here that would show you around and just show you a good time and 
have a laugh and, and uh, cruise around at night and stuff like that, to be honest. I could be missing some historical sites, I'm not sure. So that leaves Gresh and Hormuz. So Gresh is, I'm not sure if I've captured the spirit of these islands because, um, to be honest, my mobile phone kept running out halfway through uh, every time. So um, Gresh is kind of quite flashy in a way, in an Iranian way. The shopping is amazing. They've got amazing shopping centers that are on par with the West and a lot cheaper. You can get really good clothes, like really good clothes. If you want to go shopping in Iran, as of 2023, go to Resh, guys. You will save a ton of money and buy like the best stuff, best stuff. Winter clothes, summer clothes, whatever you need. Um, and the shopping centers are really, really nice. So if that kind of suits your fancy, um, it's a bit more, I suppose, developed than Hormuz. Um, and it's got beautiful natural sites, as you've seen. I recommend definitely staying a few nights at Vesh. And Hormuz is quirky, man. I didn't get to check it out. So everything I say, take it with a grain of salt. The main town, it's only got like 100,000. The, the whole island had 100,000 people. It's, it's, it's very small compared to Vesh. But we saw the geography is absolutely fucking out of this world. I felt like I was... Uh, I felt like I was on a different planet. Um, and um, I didn't stay around the town of Hormuz as long as I, as much as I wanted to. It seemed to have its own bit of kind of charm. There was, as I kind of mentioned before, there was kind of this hippie type feel. And I didn't expect to see kind of this hippie movement in Iran. But uh, definitely in Hormuz, there was a lot of like hippie guys uh, walking around making things selling things so I would have loved to have stayed in Hormuz I mean my recommendation not knowing much about Hormuz is unless you've got a friend in Bandar Abbas give it a miss um, uh, or maybe spend a day going to some sites and having dinner maybe um, but besides that I would definitely recommend staying in Gresh and then venturing out and maybe even staying a couple of nights in Hormuz um, I don't think the hotels would be ne nearly as nice. Hormuz would be like, you know, kind of a mm, bit laid back, uh, like lesser accommodation, but kind of lounge around and, and walk around and, and, you know, go to the beach. And um, uh, again, men and women are on different beaches in, in, um, in Iran. But in these island regions where mm, the enforcement is not mm, carried out, you, you know, at night, you know, boys and girls, they go with alcohol and they drink and they have a good time, right? So, um, again, the key always is kind of make, make a friend in Iran and it just opens a whole new world, unlike any other country, to be honest. So there's ferries from Bandar Abbas to Gresh, there's ferries from Bandar Abbas to Hormuz Island, and there's ferries in between the two islands as well. At Bandar Abbas, they leave every half an hour. We, we've been going, we've been doing this triangle like all day. Like we went here and had lunch, we went there and did some shopping and we did some tours and stuff. Uh, so it was really easy. Uh, and the ferries are good. They're, they're good. They're air conditioned. They're nice. Um, um, apart, one, apart from one, which was a bit dodgy. It wasn't dodgy, but just a bit, bit dodgy, a bit, bit crowded. The others were really nice. So... Um, and yeah, taste the cuisine of southern Iranian food. It's based around seafood. We have this thing called uh, guble, 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 me? guble me or something, which is kind of Iranian food infused with um, with uh, uh, um, um, Arabic food, which is really nice. It's kind of like a spicy, crispy chicken. Um, spicy rice um, and uh, some chips on the side it was, it was really nice all right guys that's it from bandera bass bye from now